Hey everybody, it's Tim from Lanessa Farms Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. As always, you can contact us on our website at www.lanessafarms.com. Send us an email at customer service at lanessafarms.com or give us a call or send us a text at the number listed below. Today we're continuing our Livestock Health Series talking about tail docking. This video, along with all of our other videos, are made for viewers just like you based off of the feedback we receive. We really appreciate those thumbs up, and most importantly, don't forget to subscribe. Without further delay, let's get started talking about tail docking. So in most of our videos, we try to avoid controversial subjects, uh, but this is one that keeps coming up over and over again. Um, this is also something that we do here on our farm, and that is tail docking. Uh, lots and lots of different schools of thoughts on tail docking. Um, why is that? Well, it's painful to the animal, um, that is for sure, um, and it can cause uh, damage to the animal that cannot be fixed. Um, so, about tail docking, people will argue the point and they'll say, well, you know, um, we, we dock tails, but that's not the way it was intended to be. The animals are born with the tail, it's there for a reason, and, and I have to agree with this to a certain degree. However, um, the caveat to that is, is that we, as in humans, have bred sheep to produce wool which is very, very different than the way that they were originally uh, developed. Original sheep back in the day um, had hair and a different type of wool that would fall out seasonally. They would develop the wool and the hair. It would get thick during the winter months. During the warmer summer months, it would fall out, and uh, there was nothing to worry about. Now that's changed with the sheep that are uh, today that we're used to. These animals have wool that will grow to an indeterminate length. That is to say, if you don't shear that sheep, it's going to keep producing wool and producing wool, and all kinds of bad things are going to happen. In the case of the tail area, the bad thing that we are most afraid of is what's called fly strike. Now, fly strike is what occurs when the wool on the animal's tail is allowed to get too long. It becomes uh, caked in fecal material and in urine. Flies will actually land on that material. They'll lay larvae in that, and eventually these larvae, these maggots, will burrow into the body of the lamb or uh, sheep and can kill it. Now, on the flip side of this, for show purposes, individuals nowadays, many individuals here in the United States, will dock the tail all the way up to the body. Um, it is completely removed, surgically removed. You can't even tell that there was ever a tail there. And the reason that they do this is they say, well, it, it makes their profile look better and they show better. Well, the danger with that is twofold. Uh, one, if the animal ever has scours, which we refer to as scours, which is actually what you and I know of as diarrhea, um, that tail actually helps to uh, direct that uh, poop away from the body and that way it doesn't get on the animal. Uh, second thing is, is it offers protection for the animal. Um, a ewe, uh, it's nice that she has that tail that actually goes down and covers the vulva. It actually helps to protect um, the more sensitive portions of her body. Um, the other thing is, is there's a lot of tendons right there by where the tail attaches to the animal's body. And if we cut those two short, we can damage the um, the anal sphincter of the animal and the animal will actually have what's called anal prolapse and that is to say when they go to poop you'll actually see their anus will actually turn inside out and I have actually seen that on, on animals that have been docked too short. Um, in some countries, uh, specifically um, in Australia, it is actually against the law 
to dock the animal's tail too short. And we'll talk a little bit more in depth in that section when you see me actually dock the tail here, I'll explain that to you. But uh, not trying to be too controversial, but this is, is the subject at hand and these are some real life issues that come up a lot when we talk about docking tails. At the end of the day, it is your prerogative as to what you do if you choose the dock or if you do not choose the dock um, i would support you either way i think if you keep an eye on your animals and you shear them appropriately um, there is no problem whatsoever with leaving the tail on the animal on the flip side if you were to want to dock this tail all the way up against the body of the animal uh, for show purposes um, i would say that that is is not a very responsible thing to do especially when considering all the damage that can potentially be done all right so next we're going to talk about uh, banding um, for castration and for tail docking today we're going to talk about banding for tail docking um, this is our docking tool um, that we're going to use. This is a nice, sturdy docking tool. Um, it, it's a little bit more expensive. The tips on the banding tool are rounded. Um, as you can see there, they're nice and round. They're not square cut off to where they're going to injure the animal. Um, mechanically, it's sound, and you can see that it works well. Now, I'm going to, in order to load this tool, I'm gonna take this little elastic donut here and I have to get it over top. I have to roll it over top of those little teeth. Now you just wanna get it as far down as you have to. Now when I squeeze the jaws, you can see it's gonna pull open. I don't wanna over squeeze it. I don't want you to work it because I want it to stay as tight as it possibly can uh, be. But this is what you would use to dock the tail or to castrate the lamb or um, whatever it is that you're doing. Right now we're gonna be tail docking. So I'm gonna go over to the animal, I'm gonna squeeze this open. The tail will go through this apparatus and then I'll roll the band off. And over time, the tail will become necrotic and fall off. Now, I've already injected my animal with my tetanus antitoxin. Um, anytime that you're gonna be creating a wound on an animal, um, you want to make sure that you use tetanus antitoxin if the animal is not already vaccinated against tetanus. Uh, that's very important. You also want to make sure that you wear your gloves to keep your hands clean um, to protect you and the animal. And you also want to make sure that the animal is clean. If we go over here and we look at our lamb, uh, this is the correct position to hold the lamb. We want to hold the lamb so the tail is out towards us. Now I've already gone through here and cleaned off a majority of any of the poop or anything that might be on the animal. Um, now traditional, there's a different schools of thoughts for banding an animal um, or banding a lamb. Now traditional school of thought is, is that you want to place the band right where the skin stops and the wool starts. So that would be right here. Now, nowadays uh, we have individuals that surgically uh, perform this all the way up flush against the animal. I like to split the difference. Um, if you were to get too close to the animal, the danger is, is that you can damage some of these tendons around the anus and it can cause prolapse. Um, so I advise against going all the way up against the animal. Um, going out to the end of the skin may be a little bit too long, but you, you probably want to consider splitting the difference. So as I said before, I'm going to take my tool here and I'm going to squeeze this open and it will allow me to take the tail and pull it through. I'm gonna take it about halfway here, and then I am going to roll it off, and that's it. Um, we're done. You can see that it's on there, and it's going to bother the animal a little bit here for about the first 10 minutes, and then after that, uh, it'll become numb and the animal will be perfectly fine. Um, so that is it. You definitely want to perform this within the first week of life. This animal here is not yet a week old. And the reason is, is all of this is soft cartilage in here now. You do not ever, ever, ever want to perform this on the lamb um, if the lamb is more than a week old. If the lamb's more than a week old and you need to dock them, this is something that you need to contact your veterinarian about. Well, we sincerely appreciate you watching our videos, and we hope you enjoyed it as much as we enjoyed making it for you. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, you got to subscribe. Subscribe now. It helps us out immensely. Also, hey, you want to follow us off YouTube? Check us out on Facebook 
at Lanessa Farms LLC, Twitter at Lanessa LLC, YouTube Lanessa Farms LLC, and on Instagram at Lanessa underscore farms. Keep those questions coming. We'll keep the videos rolling, and we will see you next time.